And before we do that, um, you know, there's this saying that we are our ancestors' wildest dreams. And so in the spirit of futuring ourselves and thinking about these next seven generations, what would you say are y'all's wildest dreams um, in terms of this cooperative abolitionist work? Um, and then we'll move into audience questions. Um, so we'd love to start with you, Morning Star. Sure. Um, when I think of wildest dreams and what Jessica was just mentioning um, in terms of, of how we treat people behind bars, um, it brings me back to, um, I was in, in college, attending a private college and volunteering on the weekends at FCI Dublin, the nearby federal correctional institution um, with their native and, and spiritual programming. And so I would walk out of this college uh, environment where no one looked like me and then walk into um, a federal correctional institution where everyone looked like me and would spend my weekends there and just spend my time, um, you know, sitting in circles and praying and talking with them and, you know, and walked out extremely um, heavy um, on, on the heart and mind in knowing that, you know, from young, young youth that were tried as adults to grandmothers um, that were there, you know, um, away from, from their grandchildren and so many that may not ever be able to hold their children again. So that's part of why, and a, a good reason why um, I continue the advocacy that I do and to ensure that um, all peoples deserve to live free of bars and free of cages and um, be in community and in spaces with their, their loved ones. Um, and so that's, that's the big dream, right? That's the big goal um, and what we work towards and what we fight towards every day. Yeah, let's popcorn it. Um, Esteban, yes, please. I can go next. Um, I'm not going to do the co-op one. I'm going to do the, the sort of like process culture answer, which is, you know, my, my dream is we're not, utopia is not a world without harm. Like that's just, that's not, that's not what we're doing. We've all, we've all been the people who transgressed, who didn't understand, who messed up. Um, and so my, my big vision is one where everyday people have skills it's just like part of our culture to know how to communicate <laughs> whether that's in your personal relationship we all have family that gets on our damn nerves like what does it look like to have skills to move through that not to be like wave a wand and it's never going to happen what does it look like to have more spaciousness compassion empathy facilitation de-escalation conflict resolution to work with that because guess what there is no world without prisons unless we have those skills embedded in everyday people and communities. This is not, you're not putting your problems just like call a order to solve your problem or to mediate the conflict, right? Like that's not what, or call your rabbi. That is not how we're getting through this. We're getting through this when our communities have the capacity and the skills to deescalate some stuff, to, to, to respond differently, not in this black, white, you're innocent, you're guilty. Um, you, you're, you're, uh, you're labeled or you're branded by the worst act you've ever done or the the worst day of of um, of your life or the worst behavior you've ever perpetrated. That is not how we're doing this. And of course that needs to be, if we're centering survivors, we're good. If we center black and indigenous people with mental health issues, black and indigenous people with disabilities, black and indigenous people who are queer, trans or non-binary, we're good. We are good. If we can do that, if we can build a world that works for those people, everyone will be totally okay, I promise you. So let's do that. Okay, I'll go next. Um, so a couple things, um, just to be practical, um, 
GEO having enough money to do a lot more of this work would be great. So please donate to GEO. Um, <laughs> you can go on our website and we have a donate button, be a sustainer so we can do more of this work and, and, and keep on going. I, I think you know that we're a, an organization of volunteers um, and we're working hard. Um, so my future is a world without, I agree we can't be without conflict, but we do need to be a world without um, state violence and without a hierarchy and oppression. And so in addition to kind of making sure we all know how to de-escalate and how to um, address conflict and how to make sure that conflict leads us to a better place, not to a, a worse place and doesn't, de you know, doesn't take us down that rabbit hole, right? But I also think we need to be in a place where we, we know how we do, we know how, and we resist um, capitalism. I mean, I, I don't think there's any way around it. I think capitalism is one of the worst problems we have because it reinforces all the things that are the root causes of um, people feeling unsafe. Um, and it's because of capitalism that we, you know, uh, that we have poverty and, and uh, that people don't have the right health care, but it's also because of capitalism that we label certain things as reasons to be incarcerated for and reasons to be arrested, right? We arrest people, as I think Ed said it at the beginning, right? Because we wanted to really maintain enslavement and we believe certain people shouldn't be free. And so we created stupid stuff. Like if you, if you look at any of the laws and it's not just the South, it's the North. New York City had laws where if you could be arrested, if you didn't, if you were a black person and you were out after 8 p.m. at night and you didn't carry a lantern because they wanted to be able to see what you were doing at night, you could be arrested for that, right? So we know that we have, right, all this kind of state violence where you make up things that are, are, that are crimes, right? And you let the people who are doing the real harm to other people, they get off because they're not in some status or category, but um, the people that you don't want, that the, that the 1%, that the people who are running everything don't want to have any rights or to be on the street or whatever, you lock them up. And so until we change that system, until it's not economically beneficial, right, to lock people up, it's not economically beneficial to have some people um, unemployed and some people not to have that, right? If we don't get rid of those kinds of systems, if we don't resist that and say, no, you know, enough is enough, we're never gonna get to the next stage. Um, and so that to me, you know, that's why I kind of like solidarity cooperatives because they, they start us practicing something that's different than that. But the real, right, the real thing we have to do is say enough is enough. This is not how human beings treat each other. This is not how we should live. And this is not how our economic, social, or political systems should operate. Um, and luckily, we know that there's other ways to do it. We've been talking about them tonight, we see them. And so we need to just say, we know how to do this in a different way, let's do it. I'm gonna try to go talk really, really fast. Uh, to me, I wanna live in a, my wild dreams are to live in a world where everybody is valued and everybody is able to produce value, where we all contribute and we all benefit, uh, where there's adequate food and shelter for everybody uh, at a high quality, where there are beautiful spaces for people to participate in that are common spaces, where the access to the resources and the earth is held in commons for us to benefit, utilize, to create uh, beauty, where we all are trying to create music and poetry and art and where we have joy daily. Uh, that's my fond dream and uh, let's do it.